of the Gasway community. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of the banking institutions of Tennessee, the Melton's Bank, and also the Gasway Post Office. To begin with, it was chartered in 1903 and continued in business through 1987. But even before it was a banking institution, it was also, again here, part of the community that was part of Melton's Mercantile. Mr. George Garrett Melton had five children, three girls and two boys. Two of the boys, along with Mr. Melton, James and John H., started the Melton's Mercantile, and it was in a wood structure building. Inside that building in 1890, the Gasway Post Office was formed, and it remained in service until 1973. Along with the Gasway Post Office then, the bank institution, like I said, was started. But before it was started in 1903, many banking transactions took place. We have records of it back in 1894 where loans, bartering through corn, wood, things of this nature was, was purchased and sold. In 1903, the bank was started with $12,000 that was generated by the Melton family. That was the security. Throughout the bank's history, it never was FDIC insured. It was always based upon the faith of the stockholders of the bank. Along with the, the history of the bank, many of the beginners also met with early endings of their life. Mr. George Garrick Melton died in 1911. His son James died in 1920. And the son that was the cashier originally Mr. John Melton died in 1923. But along when the bank started in 1903, there was an assistant cashier, Mr. Jim Kidwell, that also started working in the bank. The same year that his son, Mr. Howard Kidwell, was born. Throughout the years, the Kidwell and the Meltons run the Meltons Bank in the bank, uh, in the back of the Meltons Mercantile, along with the post office. After the death of Mr. John Melton, Mr. Jim Kidwell, the remaining cashier, invited his son to work as well as assistant cashier in the back of the store. It remained that way for the next couple of years. But Mr. Jim seen since the Meltons had died that it was time for the bank to relocate, feeling that the family would have someone else to come in and operate the store or the store could possibly sell. So Mr. Kidwell made contact with the post office and made an agreement that if he purchased a lot, built a building, that they would lease a room out of the building for the post office to remain. And that's exactly what happened. He bought the, the property, built the building in 1925, and agreed to lease the building to the post office, a room within it, for the postal service. He also agreed with the stockholders to lease the bank room in order for them to have the bank in a separate building. The banking institution was leased for one dollar. As long as it remained a banking institution, the Melton's Bank, that was the amount of the lease. If it ever ceased being a banking institution, the property would come back to the Kidwell family. Let's go inside and see the bank. Now inside the bank, many of the original structures are still here including the roll top desk. We found this again here from a family member who had uh, arrived at the desk after the, the bank had been sold. We was able to purchase it and, and bring it back to the, the bank. We also have a picture here of Miss Ethel Kidwell, which was Mr. Howard's wife, and Mr. Brent Parsley, who was from First National Bank, who purchased the charter uh, of the Melton's Bank in 1987 that came and shut the, the bank down also along with Wilda Spry. Mr. Brett Parsley is now the president of First National Bank in Manchester. But this photo again here shows Miss Kidwell sitting here at the roll top desk. And also on the roll top desk, we have the original glass lettering that was on the Melton's Bank. When we arrived at the, the building, the windows and all were broken out, but we was able to save this part of the Melton's Bank original window, front windows. Also in the bank, one of the highlights that we felt like was, was the teller's cage. 
And when the bank charter was sold in 1987, the First National Bank gave the contents, including this teller cage, to a museum in Manchester. They used the front part of the teller's cage to sell their tickets for people that was wanting to go through the, the museum. And it remained there for 32 years in use. The other part of the teller's cage, the door and the entryway on the side, they had no use for it, so they put it in storage, and it too has remained in storage for 32 years. Once we acquired the building, we went through the process of meeting with them, and we was able to, through a donation, be able to, to get the, the teller cage back. Also, the grandson of Mr. Kidwell, when we was able to acquire the building from him, he allowed us to have some of the items that was also original to the building. Some of the items is this conference table or the director's table that was used. And we have a photo again here showing of the teller cage and you can see the corner of this conference table showing in that it's original to the building. The building, like you said, was built in 1925 for different reasons. One of them being again here, the relocating of the bank to provide perhaps a more stable location for the banking facility. Also again here for the post office. One of the, some of the items that we found in the building was a map that was dated 1925 of the United States. And we feel like this was given by the Postal Service to the post office in 1925 when they moved here into this building. And again here it shows I could say again here of the territories in the United States back in that period of, of time. We'll go into the vault and let you see that. It was made again here out of concrete that was hand mixed here in the community. The concrete walls are 18 inches thick. It's about a seven by nine room. And if you walk into the, the vault there, you can see that there's no safe deposit box, it's just shelves that is on the walls. But we was also able to find many of the ledgers and documents here. And again, back in this period of time, everything is handwritten. And it's amazing to see the articulate writing that is provided again here throughout the banking institution, where that they are still legible today. Some of the items that we also had here in the bank was a little savings books um, that we found here where they would enter their, their savings account amounts into them. Also, we found counter checks on the Melton's Bank that was commonly used. And I remember using these as well. I had a small account here before it closed down. We also found several council checks uh, here. This one here is dated in 1915. Uh, we have another one here that's dated in 1918, and it's for $2. One of the unique things about the, the checks that many of them did not even have the routing numbers. And also again here, when they did start putting routing numbers on them, none of the checks ever had account numbers. And the Kidwells would always would tell us that they didn't need account numbers, they knew everyone who had an account here. They not only knew them personally, but they knew their handwritings, how important that that was. We have a picture here of an item that we have not been able to recover. Uh, it is the cannonball safe. And this wall here, the shelving is built so that the cannonball safe would fit directly underneath it. That cannonball safe again here is one of the items that we're still looking for and hopefully we'll find one of these days. Also here is a ladder back chair that was found up above the vault. And we discovered when we got up in, in the vault, you have to use a ladder to get up there above it, that nails had been driven into the, the rafters and wire had been strung. And for their archives of the banking records, it shows 1925 all the way through 1976, where the Kidwells would go in and put the, the banking records. I brought down this one here that's dated 1929. 
I'd done that in order, I left the others up there. I'd done this one in order to show that the bank never closed its doors during the Great Depression. It was one of the few banks in the nation, and specifically in Tennessee, that never closed its doors during the Depression. It was told of the story that uh, a man, two men came and took their money out early one morning, and before the end of the day, they brought their money back. The comments that they were made to Mr. Jim Kidwell was, there's no safer place that we have in this community than the bank. The Cannonball Safe saved the people's money once. In 1960, the bank was robbed. The people came in on a Saturday night. They broke through a window. At that time, there was a wood structure door to the vault, and they took dynamite and, and blew up the, the vault door. They took cash out of the two cash drawers that the bank had. They also took a savings bonds box that had war bonds within it and also some more paper documents. Those were discovered by the authorities the next day in Shop Springs, about 15 miles away from Gasaway in Wilson County. These items were still inside. The war bonds was in the box as well as the paper items was found in a ditch. They brought those back to the banking institution here. Uh, Mr. Kidwell verified that they did belong to the bank. The, the cash course was never recovered. During the time since the vault door was uh, destroyed, in order for a new vault door to be put in, there was a constable that, again that came and, and spent every night here at the bank, Mr. Dewey Stone, until a new vault door to be installed. Today, that vault door is still in presence. Uh, it shows the dates of inspections back in the 60s, uh, where it was inspected and, and guaranteed for its security. first time that the bank was robbed was in 1933. It was robbed by three men. Mr. Jim Kidwell was here and they took approximately a sum of around $2,300, which was a lot of money back in that period of time. When they left the building and they got in the vehicle, that time there was a steel bridge that went over the Clear Fork Creek. And Mr. Jim went out the door and shot at them and it described in the, the article that he made dust come up from underneath the car. Those individuals was never detained uh, that we are aware of and the money was never recovered. Here's a picture of Mr. Jim Kidwell and his son, Howard. It was made in 1949. Here's an article as well from the Nashville, Tennessean that was written about Mr. Jim and the Melton's Bank. Shows again here the type of character that this gentleman was. Not only in 1925 did he persuade the stockholders to enter into this agreement for a leasing of the, the bank building that he had built for one dollar, but he also was able to be very influential in helping people here in the community. This article relates to that, how that he would write letters on people's behalf. If they were in, in need of assistance, it appeared to be, again, that the letter was written from an attorney but Mr. Jim never had uh, any formal training to be an attorney. And you'd see the response and, and how the people many times would even have an attorney respond to the letter. Uh, Mr. Jim truly was a, uh, a great citizen here in the community, uh, well respected. He also persuaded the farmers uh, here in the community that there's many things as most community was back then, they were very self-sufficient. Um, there were stores, there were blacksmith shops, they were unique things, again, here of, of every community, I guess you say, that was similar. Schools, churches, uh, grist mills, sawmills. Mr. Jim persuaded the farmers in the area here, don't sell your livestock to other farmers. Gather them together and drive them to Brush Creek, which is, again, about 10, 12 miles away and put your livestock on the train and take them to Nashville, to the Nashville livestock market. And they done that. He also persuaded them, bring something back that we cannot make 
and produce here in our community. Br buy it, bring it back to enhance the lives of the people of the community. And they done this. They brought back many of the items, uh, such as steam engines. These steam engines were used for different purposes, some of them for grist mills, some of them for saw mills, for wheat thrashers and things of this nature. But that made the lives, not only of the farmers, but the lives really of all the people of the community uh, much more efficient and much more better. We also again here have many of the items within the bank that's original. Uh, from that 1949 picture, we was able to uh, replicate and, and have the original Burroughs uh, ad machine here that is in the picture. The money change machine uh, that is in front of Mr. Jim in the picture, we have it as well as the telephone here. Here is a book that contains many of the ledger writings of individuals and their accounts. This is Mr. George Grizzles uh, showing again here. And these transactions again here, this is 1940, uh, showing the uh, deposits, showing the checks, showing the cash that he received back. Continue again here how preserved these handwritings are and how accurate they are. We still have families that come in today and, and look up the grandparents or great grandparents and see their, their name and transaction, how amazed that they are, that whether it was 50 cents or a dollar and a half and things of this nature, that that was uh, back in that period of time a, a major amount of, of deposits. Some of the things that we found uh, within the vault, we found some uh, cemetery deeds um, and things of this nature that we gave back to the families, uh, the, the people of survivors, most of those were already deceased, but we gave them back. And how important, not necessarily to this institution, but it is to the families here in this community that these was. Here's some more checks as well that we have uh, found. And again, going back to, to many of these here, they were written not with ink pen. These here are ones that did not even have an account number or, again, the routing number uh, that was on them. Many of the checks as well was not even on the Melton's Bank. Here's one that says the Bank of Liberty, and the Bank of Liberty has been marked out, and in turn, it's been wrote in Gazaway. Again, it's been honored. This is a uh, to the clearinghouse of Mr. Jim Kidwell uh, writing that and the different emblems that was been used by the bank in times past. This is one of the original stamps. Uh, this stamp here shows the Melton's Bank, uh, the official stamp of it. Here's some more stamps and these here are the Melton's Bank uh, showing you Gasway, Tennessee. The teller cages, like I said, there was two of them that was uh, used here. There was the cashier and the assistant cashier. When this building was built in 1925, Mr. Jim was the, the cashier and his son, Mr. Howard, was the assistant cashier. Mr. Jim died in 1950, but Mr. Howard at that time continued on being the cashier. He was the only cashier that the bank had after the death of Mr. Jim. And he remained again until his death in 1986. Here's some of the, the change bags uh, that was here in the vault we found. These were the, you say that the penny wrappers would have been put in here. Um, so these were found. I remember Mr. Howard as his health uh, deteriorated over the years. Uh, when I would come into the bank, Sometimes he would ask me to, to go into the vault and get these bags that had changed within them and bring them out here and set them up on the counter so he could distribute out to the, uh, the cash drawers or he could he'd have rolls of money that had changed and he had rolled here and he'd want me to carry the bag and put it back into the vault. Uh, but Mr. Howard was, and Mr. Jim I've been told as well, is the same way, they were very particular on who they would allow to come in behind the, the teller cage. Uh, it was told again here by one gentleman that he had brought in a visitor that, to bond Mr. Howard 
and the gentleman that had come in had done went to other banking institutions in the county and um, was welcomed and things of this nature and he came in with him as well and the first thing that the gentleman done was come through the door and come around the teller's cage and come in behind the teller cage and Mr. Howard stopped him and says your business is on the other side this is my side of the business so he made him go back to the other side of the teller's cage but uh, Mr. Howard was again uh, a man of integrity uh, he knew your business but nobody else knew your business. Here's a copy of the charter of the Melton's Bank, chartered in October 1903. The capital that was put up was $12,000 to start the bank. Now in the after phase of the Melton's Bank, we have turned this into a Gasway Museum, community museum. Some of the items that we have here again is just pictures showing in here what Gasway looked like. Here's a picture of it in the early 1920s that shows the community, the landscape, structures, things of this nature. This is a warehouse building that used to sit here in Gasway uh, where they would assemble the spokes for the wheels, uh, the horses and wagons and, and buggies and things of this nature. This is also a picture of John H. Melton's and his wife's house that was beside of the store building where the Melton's Bank originally started at. The house that had the first electricity in Gasway and it had a generator in order to have that. It described people would come to Gasway at night just to see the, the lights on in the John and, and Tiny Melton's house. Here's a picture of some dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones were discovered. They were carried to Woodbury in 1950. Mr. Austin Jennings made pictures of them, sent them to the Smithsonian Institute. Two men came uh, from Washington looked at the bones, verified that yes, they were dinosaur bones and carried them back to the Smithsonian Institute. Again, this is just workers uh, that is here in the community showing in here of uh, the structures and things in which that they built. Some of the other items that we have here and in, in our museum now, here's an article that was in uh, the Cannon Courier. This was in 1981, Mr. George Grizzle. He was the grandson of G.G. Melton and it shows again here as he was nearing his 100th birthday, remembering back and giving a tribute to the Casaway community that he had grew and lived up in. Uh, this morning as we look through this, we see again here of the lifestyles that was back then, some of the highlights in which he brings forth of the, the people in Gasway, the community, how caring it, that everyone was and what a peaceful area that, it, that he lived in. Some of the other items that we've placed in our, our museum, we have a friendship quilt. This friendship quilt here again was made by the, the ladies and we know that it's approximately at least 80 years old and we have a list of all the names of the people that are embroidered uh, on the quilt. Uh, again here showing the many different families uh, that was here and the care again, the concern that they had one for another. We also have within here a stool that was used by Mr. Martin Alexander and his store that used to sit over on what is now Kidwell Lane. Uh, but that's what he would sit on behind the, this counter. Mr. Lambert Vandergriff was another store owner here within the community. And this is his farmer scale that came out of, out of his store. And here's a picture of my daughter and my mother-in-law. They made a quilt of the t-shirts that we had for the Gasway homecoming. We started the homecoming here in the community. Uh, we built a, a building in 1993 and we've continued on throughout the years of having our, our homecoming. And so that is a quilt they made from the, the shirts there. One of the items that I remember the most is our Gasway school. Uh, with that item again here that I have is a school desk that came from the Gasway school. Here's a picture of the school itself. It was, you had two rooms, mainly of classrooms, one through four grade, and then the fifth through the eighth grade. It also, again, here had a cafeteria, had an inside little gym, but the auditorium was many times the focus of attention because there was beware that people would come for entertainment, the pie suppers, the harvest festivals, and things of this nature but uh, this being a school desk. I mentioned about the Harvest Festival. 
and the pie suppers as it was called back then because the live entertainment was provided by the Noakes brothers, Mr. Clyde Noakes. Uh, he gave me this uh, guitar to put here in the museum uh, representing him and his family, but Clyde and Rayburn, we also have a picture of them in years past. They would provide the, the entertainment. Also here on the wall, we have a picture of Mr. Luke Lee Melton. He was a cousin to G.G. Melton that started the bank. Luke Lee and his wife was more interested in education of the, the youth, the children, and of religion. So uh, he gave the land where the school was up on top of Beach Hill that also served as a church. He also gave the land when another building was built in 1902 uh, for a, a church assembly. Another item that's original to the building is this long handle broom. And uh, it was in order to clean the spider webs that was up near the, the top of the, the ceilings. The original ceilings in here you know, were, were very tall and uh, so you needed a long handle broom, this is. I think you can reach easily 12 feet with this broom. When many of the people started going to public work, some of the first employment areas here, of course, was being Woodbury Colonial Shirt Factory. And here is a wreath that was been made uh, out of the spools that Thread was on from the Colonial Shirt Factory. Uh, many people would make these, paint them up as this one is, and then different times of the year, of seasons, they place a centerpiece within here for a decoration on their table, things of this nature, especially when they would have company coming, whether it was a, a family gathering or whether it was the preacher that was coming for a visit. Here is a wheel from an old grist mill. Uh, this was a steam powered grist mill. Uh, the engine was brought back again from purchase in Nashville and they placed it here across the, the creek because the water was not consistent uh, in providing uh, uh, grist for, for a meal. So this steam engine was used uh, to provide meal for the community. Here's our wall of fame that we have made within our, our Gasway Museum. Uh, to start out with, this is Mr. George Garrett Melton. As we said, he is one of the original uh, starters of the bank. It is told again here that Mr. Melton, when he died in 1911, his family purchased this tombstone uh, that is placed at his grave up on Beach Hill. And when the monument company delivered the tombstone, they could not get up the hill because the road being so narrow had mainly been used again here by foot traffic and uh, by maybe a horse and, and wagon. So they hired a local farmer and it took two teams of mules and he used a hillside slide to put the tombstone on to drag it up to the cemetery up on top of Beach Hill. Again, the resilience, determination again of the community. Another picture here on the Wall of Fame is Miss Ethel Kidwell. Uh, she is again the wife of Mr. Howard Kidwell. She was never per se an employee of the bank or the post office, but every day she would be here at both. She would help Mr. Howard, her husband, in whatever capacity that is needed, uh, whether it's in the post office as he served as postmaster for 42 years, or whether again him working in the bank, and he worked in the bank for 64 years. Uh, Miss Ethel was a seamstress, and she kept her sewing machine here. And we have it on display as well. Here's another, I think, example of community spirit. Uh, there was a lady that when we got city water here in the Gasway area that up Blair Branch, they did not extend the water up there. So these gentlemen, along with help from the churches here in the, the area and individuals, uh, financed the, the water and put in 2,800 feet of a water line in order for her and her daughter to, to have water. And uh, these individuals again here, Mr. Gerald Petro, that is uh, listed here, Mr. Bill Avery, uh, Dwayne Ashford done the backhoe work, uh, Jimmy Ramsey, Jimmy Williams, Marty Williams, and Corey Ashford, uh, the ones that, that put it in over a four day period. Just shows people who lived in the past here in Gasway to help make it a community. And again, here are people that are still living today in our community as well.
Miss Ethel was a constant companion of, of Mr. Howard and she would come here. She was a, a seamstress and this is her sewing machine uh, that was here in, in the building and we preserved it and it kept it on display here in her honor. Some of the unique items that was uh, left here in the building uh, when we acquired it was the picture again of George Washington, our first president. Uh, again, what respect and honor uh, that is given to him by the, the bank, and by the ones when they placed it in here. Some more of the original items here is a Royal typewriter uh, that was uh, here in the bank that is original to, to it as well. This light, and this is the ledger that I mentioned about earlier that shows banking transactions back in the 1890s, even before the charter joined. That was a common, not just to this community, but other communities here within the county and again throughout the state, where that mercantile stores was a gathering place for people, and it was only natural for the transactions many times to be bartered by, whether it's corn, wood, things of this nature that was paid as interest on loans and so forth. Here's another uh, ad machine that was original uh, to the bank. I was able to, to get that back as well. Also, I'd like to now take you into the Gasway Post Office. This is original sign that was the, on the old wood structure building next door prior to 1925. Like we said, in 1925, the decision was made to build this building. Mr. Kidwell built it. He made an agreement with the Postal Service to rent a room for the post office to uh, be in, and it remained until 1973. There was four RFD routes. This is a map of 1905 showing the RFD routes uh, that was here in Gasway, the rural free delivery. And as we walk into the post office, the furnishings within here are original to 1925. Uh, they were here when we acquired the building, and uh, they have remained. This is the post office cage where you would come and uh, you get your mail here at the KF counter. If you, the postmaster was not here, this is a little where you drop your letters in to be mailed out, out of town. Over here we have the four RFD routes shelves. Each shelf represented again here a route and this is where the mail would be placed. The, the mail carriers would come in, each one of them, and, and get their, their mail to be delivered. Our individuals, if they were here in Gasway, they could come by and the postmaster could give them their mail directly to them. We have original stamps uh, that the post office used here. Uh, we have the rules and the regulations of the post office uh, that is uh, here being displayed. Again, another one of the original lights that was here in the post office. Uh, we even have the, the ink that was used here, and it still is good ink. These units here was for mainly the businesses. Some of them are still have their name on tape that is here. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Gasway store. We've got Alexandra Market uh, here in this one. So this is where businesses would, would have their uh, mail delivered out. Again, it's larger for packages and things of that nature that they may be receiving. This is a certificate of Mr. Howard uh, honoring him with 42 years of service as from the United States Postal Service. This is January the 31st of 1973. Again, he served as postmaster uh, here, the longest one from 1931 until 1973 when it closed down. There was only a total of five postmasters from, uh, from the Gasway Postal Service, and that was from 1890 through 1973. We also have here in the, in the post office, one of the rural carriers, a picture of him, Mr. John B. Melton. He was a part-time school teacher, and also again here a rural carrier. He started out carrying with a horse, then he changed to a horse and buggy, and finally he was advanced to an automobile. These are his original mailbags uh, that he used. We uh, found these, these two mailbags here. The old store building, the Melton's Mercantile, it remained 
a structure, different people ran the, the business over the years, changed hands. But in 1981, a fire happened and burnt the building down. When 1981, then when that fire happened, the bank building here was still so close to it, being 10 on the side, it also caught on fire as well. The firefighters from the surrounding area came, they tore the tin off of the side of the building. When they done that, they discovered the fire was done inside in the wall and also up in the attic. So Mr. Kidwell allowed the sheriff at that time, Mr. Robert Bowell, to come and, and unlock the door and he promised Mr. Kidwell that he would stand in the door making sure that no one took anything out of the bank. So he stood in the door allowing the firefighters to come in. They tore down the ceiling in both the post office and in the bank in order to put out the fire. This year we preserved this showing how close the building came to burning down. The charcoal rafters and wood that is still there today. I wanted people to see the heroic efforts that was put forth by the firefighters and with the creek being here just directly across the road for them able to get the water supply. This part of the building again here is original, the sheetrock, nothing's been changed, the trim, everything is back original. Uh, the windows were broken out of the building, but I was able to find wooden windows and put everything back again to the way that it was. Again, another part of the original building, uh, again, is the cylinder here to make sure that the door does not slam to. Again, built in 1925, you see, it still works. appreciative of being able to acquire the teller cage back but again items such as this we had to have help to get it back so people of the community uh, and family helped us to uh, transport it from Manchester from the museum uh, those individuals Eddie Espy, uh, Mike Crossland, Jimmy Williams, uh, Kobe Ashford um, those individuals that helped us to transport it back was very much needed and necessary also again here, Mr. Tommy uh, Sanders from the community. He has made our frames that we have placed the maps that we found here in the building uh, of the RFD routes and of Cannon County of the state of Tennessee. We appreciate his talents and also his willingness to donate these items uh, for us as well. Again, as we have turned it into a museum now, the community, we appreciate the residents of the community of them bringing pictures and other items of their families that we can place here and share uh, because as we find in these communities that's what a community is it's family it's uh, families that have come together to strengthen one another and strengthen the area that we live in we're so appreciative of them and the efforts that they and the pride that they have shown as we continue to develop this into the community museum that it is as we conclude today Come and visit us at the Gazaway Community, the Melton's Bank, and the Post Office of Gazaway. This is a sign that was placed here, zip code 37070. Thank you for your time and your interest. I hope you've enjoyed it, a little part of history.